wolves are known as vicious predators, but even they sometimes need help. John, a prospector searching for gold along Coho Creek in southeastern Alaska, stumbled upon a trapped timberwolf while emerging from the island's forest. Standing only 20 feet away, John froze at the sight of the large animal caught in a trap that he recognized as belonging to his hunter friend, George. Unfortunately, George had passed away from a heart attack the previous week. Thanks to John's timely arrival, the wolf and her cubs were saved from certain death. Four years later, John was out in the wilderness when he heard a strange howl. To his amazement, a pack of timber wolves emerged, one of which he recognized as the wolf he had saved. The wolf approached John and nuzzled his hand, showing gratitude for his past act of kindness. From that day on, John continued to encounter the wolf and her pack during his trips into the wilderness, a testament to the lasting impact of a single act of compassion. When John stumbled upon a trapped wolf, he cautiously approached it with hopes of helping. The wolf, confused and scared, backed away and struggled against the chain of the trap. Upon closer inspection, John noticed that the wolf was a female with full teats, indicating that she had hungry pups waiting for her in a nearby den. Realizing the importance of freeing the wolf so she could tend to her young, John remained still and observed the situation. Based on his observations, John guessed that the wolf had only been trapped for a few days, which meant her pups were likely still alive and nearby. However, freeing the female wolf posed a challenge since she was tethered to the trap. Despite the difficulty, John knew he had to act quickly to help the wolf return to her pups. He carefully worked to free her from the trap, ensuring that she would be able to safely care for her young once again. John was hesitant to set the trapped wolf free, fearing that she might become aggressive and attack him to protect her cubs. Instead, he came up with a plan to search for the cubs and reunite them with their mother. He followed the tracks of the mother wolf, which eventually led him to her den at the base of a large spruce tree. Approaching the den cautiously, John didn't want to scare the shy and cautious pups. Despite his efforts to get their attention by mimicking the call of their mother, there was no response from the den. John knew that getting the cubs out of the den would be tricky, and he didn't want to cause any harm in the process. He remained patient and continued to observe the den, waiting for a sign that the cubs were still inside. Finally, after some time, he heard the faint sound of whimpering coming from inside the den. John carefully worked to extract the cubs, ensuring that they were unharmed in the process. Once he had successfully retrieved them, he brought them back to the trapped mother wolf and reunited the family. The mother wolf was overjoyed to see her cubs and showed her gratitude to John by allowing him to approach and even nuzzling his hand. Thanks to John's kindness and quick thinking, the wolf family was safely reunited and able to continue thriving in the Alaskan wilderness. John persisted in his efforts to help the trapped wolf and her cubs. Despite his initial fears of the wolf turning aggressive, he decided to search for the cubs and found them in a den near the bog. He imitated the mother's call and managed to lure the starving pups out of the den and into his bag. He then returned to the trapped mother wolf, who was overjoyed to see her babies with him. However, freeing the female wolf was still a challenge, as she would growl and warn John back every time he tried to approach. Realizing that he needed to keep her strength up, John went in search of food and found a deer carcass. He cut off a hindquarter and fed it to the mother wolf. Despite his attempts to free her, John was still unable to do so. He decided to camp out near the bog and keep a watchful eye on the little wolf family. Over the next few days, John noticed that the mother wolf's leg was gradually healing, and she was becoming less aggressive towards him. Finally, on the fifth day, the female wolf allowed John to approach her and remove the trap from her leg. As soon as she was free, she and her cubs disappeared into the forest, leaving John with a sense of accomplishment and gratitude. Over the next four years, John continued to see the same wolf pack in the area, and he knew that he had played a small part in their survival. John was pleasantly surprised to see that the mama wolf was now lying calmly next to him, no longer growling or showing any signs of aggression. He cautiously reached out his hand to touch her, and she nuzzled her head into his palm. It was a breakthrough moment for the two of them, and John knew that it was finally time to try to free her. 
He slowly approached the trap, keeping his movements slow and deliberate so as not to spook the wolf. As he got closer, she stood up and moved towards him, as if sensing that he was there to help. John quickly got to work on the trap, trying to free the animal without hurting her. It was a difficult and nerve-wracking process, but finally, with a loud snap, the trap sprang open, and the wolf was free. She immediately bounded away, but after a moment, she turned back to look at John and let out a soft howl, as if to say thank you. Over the next few days, John watched as the wolf and her pups played together, and he knew that he had made a friend for life. He continued to bring them food and to check on them regularly, and he even gave them names, Luna for the mama wolf, and her pups were now known as Comet, Orion, Leo, and Lyra. When it was time for John to leave the island, he knew that he would never forget his time with Luna and her pups. He left them with a heavy heart, but he was grateful for the experience and knew that he had made a difference in their lives. After days of building trust with the trapped wolf, John's efforts paid off. He carefully examined the steel trap and saw that it had caught only two of the animal's toes, which were swollen and cut, but she wouldn't lose the paw. John found the release catch and quickly freed her. Instead of running away, the mother wolf did something unexpected. She slowly approached John and began to lick his hands and fingers. It went against all of John's knowledge about wolves, but he was happy to let it happen. Eventually, the mother decided it was time to leave, and she gathered up her pups to walk towards the forest. Before disappearing, she turned back to John as if asking him to follow her. He gathered his belongings and followed the wolf. Together, they ascended Kupernuf Mountain and came upon an alpine meadow. In the shadows lurked a wolf pack of around nine adults and four nearly full-grown pups. John's heart sank as he saw the trap, a reminder of the wolf he had helped so long ago. He approached the trap and saw that it had been twisted and mangled, as if something powerful had tried to break it open. Then, he heard a howl. It was a howl he recognized, and it was coming from up ahead. John followed the sound, walking slowly and carefully. As he came around a bend, he saw them, a pack of wolves, led by a familiar figure. It was the mama wolf, the same one he had helped all those years ago. She was older now, with graying fur and scars on her face. But she still had the same piercing eyes and regal bearing. John watched in awe as the pack howled and ran around him, circling him but never attacking. They seemed to recognize him, or at least remember him. After a few minutes, the pack began to move on, running off into the woods. John watched them go, feeling a sense of peace wash over him. He had done something good all those years ago, and it had come back to him in a way he never could have imagined. After encountering a mother wolf trapped in a steel trap, John gained the animal's trust and eventually freed her. To his surprise, instead of immediately leaving with her pups, the wolf approached and licked his hands. John followed the wolf and her pups to an alpine meadow where they were greeted by a pack of wolves. John watched in amazement as the family howled together. The next day, John said goodbye to the wolves and left, but the memory of the experience stuck with him for the rest of his life. For years after the encounter, John returned to the area and was drawn to the meadow where he called out to the wolves. To his surprise, the mother wolf he had saved appeared and wagged her tail in greeting before disappearing into the woods. Although the story's authenticity is uncertain, the experience of forming a bond with an animal is one that many people can relate to. The article concludes by asking readers what they would do if they came across a wolf in need and encouraging them to like and subscribe for daily inspiring videos. For human beings, saving people in distress is something that each of us will do. It is not for seeking rewards, but because of the kindness in our hearts. Being kind to others has always been the way we treat everyone. Human beings are like this. Animals do it too. Although animals do not have complex emotions like humans, it is precisely because of their pure emotions that they can give regardless of rewards. There are many stories about humans rescuing animals in distress. But when animals encounter humans in distress, they also lend a helping hand. It's hard to find someone to help us when we're in danger. It's even harder in the middle of nowhere. 
By chance, a forest ranger rescued two trapped bear cubs in the wild. One day, Jeff's friend told him that he saw his fiancée dating a rich man in a restaurant. Jeff rushed to the restaurant very angry, attacked the rich man with a weapon, and later learned that he was the son of the local policeman. Jeff was finally sentenced to a remote area to serve three years in prison. Three years later, Jeff was released after serving his sentence, but he didn't want to go back to his hometown. He decided to stay in a village closer to nature, next to the forest. Because of Jeff's hardworking, steadfast and willing to work, the local village head gave him the job of forest ranger. Jeff readily agreed. Since Jeff took over as a ranger, the forest has become much more organized. While working as a forest ranger, Jeff discovered that a large number of oak trees had been cut down in the forest. Jeff was very angry, but he didn't know who did it, so he wrote to the local government and asked them to assist in the investigation. Jeff waited for a long time but did not receive a reply from the government. One day in early spring, when the sun rose from the ground, the earth was slowly covered with a layer of gold, and the first ray of sunlight in the morning sprinkled on Jeff's face through the window, and Jeff slowly woke up from his sleep. At this moment, the howling of animals came from near the distant river, and the sound was faintly visible. Jeff worried that the animals in the forest would be attacked by poachers, so he quickly picked up his weapon and rushed to the river. Jeff came to the side of the river that was making strange noises, and was stunned by the scene in front of him. The forest in early spring is still extremely cold, and the ice on the river has not completely melted. The two smaller black bears were struggling desperately in the river at this time, as if they were drowning, and the bigger black bear lay helplessly beside the river bank and howled helplessly. It seemed that they should be mother and child. The family must have been chased by poachers. They accidentally stepped on thin ice and fell into the river. The mother bear managed to escape, but the cubs were helpless. The worried mother bear could only stand helpless by the river bank. Jeff immediately ran to the river bank, took off his coat, and jumped into the river without hesitation. The icy cold water penetrated his clothes and made him shiver. But Jeff didn't think so much, he just wanted to save the bears. And the two little black bears were finally saved and returned to their mother. Jeff thought that the black bear would treat him as a poacher and attack him, but the mother bear just looked at Jeff quietly for a while, then turned around and disappeared into the forest with the two cubs in her arms. A year has passed, but the loggers are still quietly cutting down the trees in the forest, and the ecological environment has been severely damaged. How could Jeff, as a forest ranger, endure the existence of such criminals, so Jeff prepared to collect evidence by himself, and then take the information to the police station. On this day, Jeff took his camera and set off to the forest, ready to take pictures of the criminal evidence of those poachers. In the depths of the forest, lumberjacks were cutting down the oak trees in the forest. Jeff took out his camera and carefully took pictures of the poachers and evidence of logging, when Jeff was concentrating on taking the photos. His movements are too obvious, the loggers found him and ran towards Jeff's position angrily, Jeff was found and wanted to run away in a panic, but accidentally tripped over a stone and fell to the ground. The poacher immediately snatched the camera from Jeff's hand. In order to protect the evidence from being destroyed, Jeff tried to get the camera from the poacher. But he didn't notice that the poachers had weapons in their hands, there are a lot of lumberjacks here, Jeff was attacked by the poachers despite his precautions, and Jeff's leg was injured that he knew that he would definitely suffer if he continued to entangle like this, so he decided to ignore the camera and turn around to run away. Because his leg was injured, he tripped over a branch on the ground and fell to the ground within a few steps. Jeff fell into despair at this time, the evidence was not obtained, he was about to lose his life. Seeing that Jeff could no longer leave, the poachers approached Jeff slowly, preparing for further actions.